Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, Gigabyte's Z370 Aurorus Ultra Gaming Motherboard for Intel's new 8th generation of core processors. This is a quick look and overview of a very nice looking board. Now I'm going to cover multiple Z370 boards on my channel. There'll be a link down in the video description below for all of my motherboard and CPU reviews. There will also be a link to the launch videos for the Coffee Lake 8th generation of Intel Core processors. Check those out if you'd like more details on the CPUs themselves. This is about this motherboard. Now I don't want to talk too much in detail about the chipset because the Z370 is the same between all of the motherboards and I'd just be repeating myself in video after video. So instead I want to talk about what makes this board unique. Why is this special? Why should you consider this board versus all the other Z370 boards out there? One other quick reminder before we get into it, links to this board and to all the Z370 boards to Amazon and Newegg will be down in the video description below. Links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon will also be down there as well. If you like my videos, if you want to support me, I would certainly appreciate it if you check those out. Now, this is a very nice board. It's a premium top tier board. They do make less expensive boards, but if you want a board with all the good features, with the Intel Gigabit Ethernet, if you want it with the Realtek ALC1220, 120 signal to noise ratio, which is much better than the previous generation chips, dual NVMe PCI Express slots, RGB everything, you have definitely come to the right place. This has USB Gen 2 3.1 10 gigabit support. It really is a very nice board, and if you're looking for premium, put this on your shortlist. I'll come back to the other features in a minute, but RGB is something I wanna talk about first. Now I know 2017 has been completely filled with RGB. RGB this, RGB that, but it is the year of RGB lighting. If you're looking for a board that doesn't just give you token RGB so it's a feature checklist on the box, but instead you really want it, if you're serious about filling your case with lights, take a look at this board. In just a second, I'm actually going to go full screen and show you what this looks like. There are two headers on the board where you can attach up to 300 LEDs in light strips. There are LEDs all over this board, not just one on the chipset and maybe one on the shroud. This on the side is RGB. All four RAM slots are RGB. The PCI Express slots are RGB. The chipset has LED lights. There is a strip on this side. Even the voltage regulator models on modules on both sides of the CPU are RGB. It's not just token. They went to the nines on this thing or turned it up to 11 depending upon how you look at it. So if you really want that, if you actually want the entire board to be able to light up, if you want many different modes to run the light strips and actually fill your case with multiple light strips, then this actually really should be on your short list. I know a lot of boards say RGB, but many times it's just one or two lights. This takes it to 10. Let me show you what it looks like. I'm showing you the website at the moment, which of course you could certainly go to yourself, but it just makes it easy by putting it in the video. You can see here that it supports up to 300 digital LED RGB lights. That is a lot. However, have you ever seen that on a board? Now that's a grid pattern, but that can be plugged into the board and placed into your machine. The software will also drive it with many different patterns. That's beautiful. If that's something you're interested in, seriously, look at all the different modes, all the different colors that are options with this board. They include software that give you these choices. Now I mentioned before, I'll switch it over to Pulse. I mentioned before the two PCI Express slots are lit up the four RAM slots, this strip over here next to the power connector, the, uh, the chipset, and then here you can see the lights on the actual voltage regulators themselves and the one more strip over here. Too many boards that call themselves RGB have one or two lights on the board and they call it a day. They've pretty much covered this board top to bottom and left to right. Now, just to show you what's possible, I've changed it to advanced mode and shown you you can also control individual zones. I've made the voltage regulators red. I've made the PCI Express slots blue. I've made this and the strip over here flash and then made the RAM slots yellow. Likewise, you can use the included RGB Fusion software with the two LED strips to also further customize it. Now, I understand RGB isn't everybody's thing and if not, well, maybe this isn't the right board for you because it is the focus. But if you do want it, it's got everything. Now beyond just the RGB features, which it has a lot of, it does include everything else you'd expect from a top tier board. 
excellent overclocking support, an award-winning BIOS with all the features you'd need to tweak to your heart's content. It includes two NVMe compatible PCI Express M.2 slots, the bottom one of which will also take a SATA SSD M.2 if you want to install one, such as a Crucial MX300 or a Samsung 850 Evo. But I would recommend installing NVMe drives in there. Intel Optane support, of course, and most importantly, the top NVMe uh, supported slot is above the graphics card for cooling, so your graphics card won't be sitting on top of it. That is very good. Several other features about this board that just based on experience of installing boards, I really like seeing. There is both a standard USB 3.0 as well as a 3.1 connector here on the side of the board for front panel connectors, so it supports both current and next generation cases. A full suite of connectors along the bottom, including multiple USB 2 connectors, front panel audio, and the like. And most importantly, it has one of these. This is an assistance installation guide tool for the front panel connectors, the reset switch, power switch, hard drive activity light, etc., which are always so hard to get individually onto the bottom connectors. This gives you a guide to make it much easier to install. You plug them in the top of here where you can see them and then plug that down there rather than having to fumble about. So I really like having that. You get a suite of SATA um, cables for drives as well as your IO shield, which is very nice. And you can see it's screen printed in black as well. Now, this is gonna be one of the boards I test with, and you'll see that in upcoming benchmarks. It is a very nice board. And frankly, for those of you looking for a premium experience and RGB lights, for somebody looking for all the key features, I would put this on your short list. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check out the links in the video description below all of my motherboard and CPU reviews, the Coffee Lake launch review, and then ultimately benchmark reviews will be coming soon as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.